Hi guys and welcome to the Black Gold Homestead. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about um, taking care of your animals in the winter and specifically watering them. Um, as you can see behind me, we have some snow and ice. Um, the low last night was 23, 25 range. Tonight it's projected to be 17 to 19 degree range. So, you know, there are certain things you can do to keep your animals watered. And um, let us walk and talk. Um, a lot of people like to use heated waterers and I don't recommend them, but at the same time, do what's best for you and your farm. But um, there are other efficient ways to water your animals without that heated water. Now, I recommend never using um, hot water for your animals in the winter. Um, don't necessarily use cold water either, but just use a uh, kind of lukewarm water. Now, for most of our animals here on the farm, we use these rubber bowls. And um, the rubber bowls absorb the heat quite well. And um, generally, because they're rubber, they're flexible, and the ice comes right out. And um, also, another tip is, since ice expands, don't fill the bowls up all the way. Just deep enough for the animals to get in there and get a drink. Okay, so another question that a lot of people have is, why not use heated waterers. Well, with heated waterers and with any um, electrical source, there is a chance of fires happening. And um, that's the biggest reason why we don't use them, number one. But number two is they are kind of expensive and um, they um, can cause some problems for the animals. They can get caught up in them and they can chew on the wires and get shocked. But at the same time, like I said, do what's best for you and your farm. Now, um, you might be wondering where you can get rubber bowls for for your animals. Um, generally, um, you can get them at any um, livestock store, Southern States, Tractor Supply. I get mine at Tractor Supply. They're quite inexpensive. My second tip for you all is whenever you're watering your animals in the winter, give them as much water as they can drink before the water freezes. In other words, you don't have to necessarily fill their bowls to the rim if you know they're not going to drink all that water before it freezes. And um, generally, I come out twice a day and do waters. I usually come out in the morning around 9 to 10 and then my sister comes out and I help do it too. We do it around 3 or 4 in the evening and that makes sure that the water, the animals have water pretty much 24-7. So as I said up front at the front chicken coop, we use the um, rubber bowls for watering the poultry and all. But for the rabbits, I recommend using these um, small metal pet bowls. And once again, you can get them at just about any um, tractor supply, um, feed store, pet dollar store even carries them. And the reason why we use metal bowls for the rabbits is because they are not able to chew them. They will have a tendency to chew the rubber bowls. And 
whenever you're getting a bowl, look for a bowl that has this indentation inside of it because if you can see there, that indentation moves, which means when this is completely frozen solid, you can turn it upside down and press out the ice, like a big ice cube tray. So those, those metal bowls work really go, good for the rabbits, and we change them out twice a day, <coughs> and they work pretty good. Now, for our bigger animals, the donkey, the sheep, and the goats, they have larger rubber buckets, and once again, the ice freezes in these, but it's easy to change out. I just take a stick, break the ice out, and this is the nice part about these. You can see there's ice on the rim. You can just take it and bend it because it is rubber and that'll come right off. Now, the ice you want to keep somewhere out of the way where you're not going to walk because if you put it right where you have to walk, you're liable to slip on it. Okay, so now we're going to go back here and I'm going to show you some of the other waters we use. We use, um, once again, a rubber bucket for our male goat. But Come on in. So this, once again, is a rubber bucket and there's a layer of ice on it. But we won't fill it up all the way. That's not necessary. But the final thing that you can use in the winter to water animals is bread pans and cooking pans. Metal ones, of course. So <coughs> here you can see we have a metal cooking pan. And because it's metal, it's quite slippery and you can press on it and bang it without it breaking like on the ceramic bowl and get the ice straight out. So that's how we water the animals in the winter and it's just thoughts that you can use to keep them watered and um, if you have the right buckets you don't have to worry about the buckets cracking you don't have to worry about um, the ceramic bowls cracking so if you have the right, right equipment it makes it easier um, I hope you like I, you enjoyed this video I hope it gave you some good points and tips and don't forget to subscribe and like the videos and um, coming up on the channel we'll be doing videos on seed starting thank you for watching okay so guys um, an important thing um, as you can see we once again have a rubber bowl here but it's frozen and the animals can't get the water out if you have ducks and um, geese or any type of waterfowl in the homestead they need to have water while they're eating um, they are used to you know and they are made to drink a lot of water and if they don't have that water available, they can choke on their food. So what I recommend doing is dumping out the um, water and watering your waterfowl, then feeding them. Because it can happen, they can choke. So it's always a good idea to water your waterfowl first, then feed them. So that was the tip of the day.